So a little bit about the long-eared owls this year is kind of unique. This habitat behind me, we sometimes we refer to it, you know, affectionately as the truck stop. It's just this big turnover. There's always uh, long-eared owls in here, sometimes solid owls. And this is one of our, you know, one of our good winter transition sites. Uh, this year we probably banded, you know, I don't know, I'd have to look, but about 10, 12 long-eared owls in the winter roost this year. Some of you maybe got to see some of them from time to time because our winter camera's in there, except they changed roost locations, and so now they're over to the side. But uh, what's unique about this and what I wanted to bring you up to date is this area is really small. It's probably a 50-meter circle, 50-yard circle, and it's a willow thicket. Uh, good for, you know, wintering groups of long-eared owls. In the past, you know, we somewhat regularly have the birds breeding in here, usually one nest, rarely two nests. This year, with so many voles around, both in the Missoula and the Mission Valleys, you know, we were hoping for a good year, and we have four nests in this area to start this year. And I, it's unprecedented for this little spot, which is just so, so small. And the nests, you know, there's two of them behind me here. You can see there's a nest behind me. There's a female on it. Uh, her tail is sticking out, so you're not going to give a good look at it. Just you'll see a clump of a nest. And then just back behind her was another nest. And then over to the winter cam, where you see that male from time to time, there's a nest there. And then just across, um, you know, 40 yards from that, maybe 30 yards from that, is another nest. So we've never seen anything like it. We came in earlier and... Um, try to get the males. We always try to get the males first. We try to leave the females alone during the incubation in the early brood rearing period when the chicks are so small. So all the males have been marked. So we had four males uh, associated with four nests. We have them marked in a, in a way that only we can read. And so we know each, each male is associated with each nest. Now our next step here is going to be to capture the females, but we're gonna wait a little bit. The problem with waiting is that sometimes nests fail. So the upside is you get the female right away. Uh, the downside, if you don't get her right away and you wait till after they hatch and they're a little bigger, is you might lose one if there's a nest failure. So what we want to do here is we want to just, you know, get them and then get a bunch of feathers and blood from the adults and the chicks, the purported pairs, and just see if there's any kind of, you know, extra pair fertilizations or copulations, you know, is there mixed parentage among this close, you know, nesting group of birds. Now, going back to what I just said here, in the course of waiting, when we came back in, uh, Steve Harrow, our pygmy owl expert, he was in here doing some monitoring, oh, well, I don't know, a week, 10 days ago, maybe more, and uh, found one of the female longer owls from nest number four, uh, dead on the ground and at the same time while he was going through here he noticed uh, an the hawk which later turned out to be what we think is a female Cooper's hawk. So the female long-eared owl was banded and she was pretty much picked clean right below the nest. Did that female Cooper's hawk pull her out of the nest and kill her and eat her? Did the great horned owl that's nesting not too far away come in and kill her and eat her? We don't know the answer to any of that. We weren't able to get in the nest to, to count the number of eggs to see, you know, the clutch size or any of that stuff. But that was kind of sad. Um, part of the part of life, though, I guess. And so, but there still were four males in here. So will that male try to acquire another mate and continue to nest or we just hang out? We, we don't know that. So we're trying to figure these things out right now. In the course of visiting the nest to capture the females, we also checked on things. And what was really neat, if we look at the, I think this is year 37 on the Long at All project, uh, the mean and the mode is five eggs. You know, I mean, it's pretty much the most common clutch size, plus it's the mean. And three of these four nests were able to get the data. They all had six eggs, again, maybe indicating that it was a healthy vole population. So, um... The next thing to do here is just wait, wait till the chicks are big, hopefully no other predation, and we can kind of trap the females and look at their band numbers and see if they're the females that were in the winter roost. Most of those males, I think, were in the winter roost here as well. So uh, that's a little update on the long ears.